welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the beautiful campus of the University of San Diego for today's softball game between the University of San Diego Toreros and the visiting Columbia Lions. Toreros just knocked off Harvard 1-0 on a walk-off air in the 10th inning to win their fifth game in a row and bring their record to a season-high six games over 500. They are 20-14 and 14 and taking on the Columbia Lions, who are 3-11. and 11. USD took two for them yesterday, beating them 6-0 in game one and 4-2 to two in the second game. USD pitching staff is really on point right now. They've only given up seven runs in the last seven games. And, of course, the last inning, a 10-inning shutout for Paige Von Sprecken. She only gave up two hits as her stellar freshman campaign continues. I'm Ben Pearson, and I'll be joined by Nikki Geis, former Torero shortstop. And although, Nikki, that... The win didn't come in the conventional way in game one. They found a way to get it done with stellar pitching and defense. Absolutely. I mean, the way that she defended her position was impressive to me, especially as a freshman. And then she actually had a key bunt to get that runner over to third base um, in the bottom of the 10th and, and set her team up for success. Impressive. Well, the starting lineup for the Lions, they'll lead off. They'll have Alex Cook at third base, batting second, the catcher, Kayla Shimoda, in the three spot. First baseman, Kerry Cook, and cleanup, the pitcher, Tanya Wu, in the five spot. Center fielder, Jackie Lee at sixth, Mackenzie Lakian, seventh, the DP, Liz Caggiano, eighth, shortstop, Madison Gott, and hitting ninth, the second baseman, Taylor Strout, the first pitch from Grace Hernandez Mitches, misses for ball one. Grace Hernandez, she picked up both the wins yesterday against Columbia. And going for win number three against Columbia today. Quickly set the Troy defense for you in the outfield from left to right. You have Morgan Kurtz, Olivia Sandusky, and Kaylee Hill. The infield starting at third. Chloe Kaneko, Daniel Mavertis at short, Taylor Schultz at second, Caitlin Rooney at first. It's that next, next pitch misses away. Mary Growski is behind the plate and Grace Hernandez in the circle. Same starting nine for the Toreros. Just a few different uh, slotting in the lineup. We'll get into that in the bottom half of the inning. Grace Hernandez five and six on the year. The junior didn't get a lot of action her first two years pitching behind senior aces Cassie Coleman and Jenny Lahit, but she's really had a good year so far with a 3-2-3 ERA in her 13 starts. And as I said yesterday, she picked up two wins against Columbia in the first game. Her and Megan Sabatini combined for a shutout. And then in game two, she gave up two runs. Only one was earned. And then Paige Von Sprecken came in to get her first career save. 2-1 count. Alex Cook. That one's in there for a strike. Two and two. Columbia, like Harvard's, on a, a long road trip. They were out in beautiful Hawaii, and now they are got banned to beautiful San Diego. Not a bad road trip for a team that's from New York, where currently they are snow. It is snowing there. Down the line, they're going to call it fair. She's going to have a stand-up double to lead things off for the Lions. That was a close call right down the line. And they're saying it skipped over the base. So they will lead off with a double. USD only gave up two hits in 10 innings in their first game and already gave up one here to the leadoff hitter for the Lions, Alex Cook. So, Nick, you've played in a lot of double headers in your day. Coming off a, an exciting wa walk-off win, how important is it to kind of just clear your head and regroup for game two? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're especially when you're facing a new team. I mean, yes, they played them last night, but, you know, it, it's the start of a new ball game. So what you want to do is you want to take that momentum, especially off such a dramatic win, but then you have to focus up on the task at hand. It can, it can be difficult, but it's what they do, right? This is why they play the game. They've been doing it for a long time, most of them. So I know they have the mindset to, to make sure they get it done. Shimoda squares the bunt and pulls it back for with uh, ball one. Shimoda hitting 184 on the season. Nine sacrifices, which is the team leader. Squares again there, misses, 2-0. 
2-0 count. Hernandez winds and deals. Gets a bunt down, but skips foul. And 2-1. Another beautiful spring day in San Diego. Not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures in the low 70s. Slight breeze. USD in their navy blues. Columbia Lions in white. Squares the bunt. Fouls that one off. She's frustrated. She knows that was a good pitch to bunt. Columbia is coached by Jennifer Teague in her first season. Assisted by Emily Friedman. Just their 15th game on the season. Doesn't square that time, but Grace misses outside full count. Oh, misses as well. So first two runners reach. For the double, Hernandez gives up a walk, and that will bring up first baseman Kerry Cook, who is the Lions leader in batting average, hitting 333. Also leads the team in RBI total bases. Seven RBI, one home run, two doubles. It's an interesting spot. Will Coach have her sacrifice to move the runners or, or let such a great batter go ahead and hit away in this situation. Also got a good hitter up next, their cleanup hitter, Tanya Wu, hitting 314 on the year. These are the only two hitters for the Lions that are above the 300 mark. She does square, gets it down. Mary grabs it before it can go foul. 2-4 put out, but the runners do advance on a nice sack bunt. So I'll bring up their cleanup hitter. The pitcher, Tanya Wu, in 314, 5 RBI. Team high 415 on base percentage. And a chance here to give the Lions an early lead with runners on second and third and just one out. Torero's playing in, try to cut off that run. Grace Hernandez, the ground ball pitcher. A couple of these opportunities last night. And USD was able to get the tag at home. Reserve runs from coming across. That one's in there, one and one the count. Pulled foul, one and two. Columbia, smaller roster, only 15 players. So limited people on the bench. Nice snag by Rooney. Thinks about going home. Instead, he'll get the force out. Nice play by Rooney. And she shows why she has the highest fielding percentage in USD history. Nice snag there. Get it out and saves a run. Number 14, Jackie Lee. That was a tough play right there. It's an interesting bounce getting into that, into the runner's lane. Was able to make that and, and give her team a chance. Now with two outs. Foul tipped to the center fielder, Jackie Lee, making her fifth start of the season. In limited action, she is three for 13 with an RBI. Grace Hernandez trying to get out of a jam. She gave up a leadoff double and then walked the second batter. They were sacrificed over on a nice bunt. Swing and miss there, and Grace is ahead 0-2. Columbia, like Harvard, has not played a home game all season. As I mentioned, their field is currently covered in snow. They are hoping to have a home game this weekend. Pulled foul. Oh, 
2 count. Swing and foul back. Gets her swing in, so Grace gives up the leadoff double. Walks next batter, but is able to get out of a jam. And continue USD's scoreless streak. And we'll stay right here and give you the starting lineups. Starting lineup for the Toreros. It's the same nine, only one switch in the four or five spot flip-flop. So Sandusky leads off. She's playing center field, followed by senior captain Morgan Kurtz. Then Kaylee Hill, she's in right. Grabowski moves up from the five spot into the cleanup spot. She's a catcher. Chloe Kaneko, who was a cleanup, now she's hitting fifth, the third baseman. Caitlin Rooney, the first baseman. And Tatum Schultz back at second. Paige Von Spreck, not pitching, but just the DP tonight. And then Danielle Maverdis. And for the Lions defensively. In the outfield from left to right, Mara Lynch, Jackie Lee, McKenzie. Caggiano in third base, Alex Cook. Shortstop, Madison Gott. Second baseman, Taylor Trout. First base, Carrie Cook. Behind the plate is Kayla Shimoda. And on the mound is Tanya Wu. Who has the most innings pitch of any Lions pitcher. She is 2-4 and four with a 4-1-7 ERA. This is her seventh start of the year. She has two complete games. Opponents hitting 284 against her. Giving up just seven walks in 36 and two-thirds innings with 31 strikeouts. USD got the win last game, but obviously struggled offensively, not scoring until the bottom of the 10th on a walk-off air. And before the air that ended up ending the game, there was another air on a pop foul behind home plate. The catcher went in and out of their glove in the very next pitch, I believe, a pop up right to the shortstop. Same thing, had the glove out, just bounced right out. The runner was able to come home to score from third. She started the inning at second with international tiebreaker rule. But a win's a win, and that's five in a row for USD. Season, season long win streak. And Nikki, they're certainly peaking at the right time with conference play right around the corner. Absolutely. I was talking to Coach Mack before the game, and uh, with just one more doubleheader after this and then starting conference, it is it, it really is the perfect time for them to be on this streak. Sandesky up, takes the first pitch for a ball. Conference schedule. So in the second year being in the WCC, only six softball teams. So a 15-game schedule, you play all five teams with a three-game series, a doubleheader, and then a single game. So in the big picture, non-conference really doesn't matter as long as you can get hot and get that automatic bid from the WCC. USD is the only team other than BYU with a winning record in the WCC. BYU entered the week at 17-7. and seven. Sandusky takes a call at strike, one and two the count. This year, USD will play at BYU. Last year, BYU came here for the, the WCC opening series. Sandusky fouls that off. And in the very first WCC game, Cassie Coleman threw a no-hitter as USD won 4-0 to in the first WCC softball game ever. Coleman, of course, had a great... Great career here is now assistant coach. Sandusky goes down swinging the ball that was out of the zone. It's so great for these players to be a part of a conference where they can, can get an automatic bid. I mean, growing up playing softball, that's what you hope for, you know, just a chance, just a chance to go and play in the postseason. Kurtz take the first one, looking. And really, before being the WCC, they were in the Pacific Coast Softball Conference for a while, and with that level of competition, it was near impossible to get an at-large bid into the tournament. So with uh, Pacific joining the WCC last year, it gave them a six teams, which is the NCAA minimum to have your own league. 
was able to get USD to join the rest of their sports. In the WCC is Kurtz. Swings through that one, so two strikeouts for Wu to start. I'll bring up Kaylee Hill. Number 21, Kaylee Hill. So last week after Hill hit five home runs in six games, she's gone four straight without a home run here. Fouls that one off, and unfortunately, that's just kind of the nature of the beast here at the USC Softball Complex. Not a lot of home runs here. In deep dimensions, high walls. But Coach Mack has done a great job recruiting to those strengths. And their kind of their method of winning the last few years has been pitching and defense. Up high. Speaking of defense, my broadcast partner, Nikki Geis, the USD all-time leader in assists. Played shortstop here for four years. Hill gets a hold of that one, but pulls it foul. I didn't even know I held that record. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Take what I can get. That means one, obviously, you were a solid defender, but then you had pitchers that were able to keep the ball on the ground give you a lot of opportunities absolutely it was a pleasure playing for them I just knew I was going to get a lot of ground balls it was just up to me to do my job two and two the count change up still gets it right up the middle and that's what Kaylee Hill does doesn't matter where the ball is, she's going to get a bat on it. She has the strength to get on base. So that will bring up Grabowski, moved into the cleanup spot. After a rough start to the season, she's got her average up to 282. Tied for second on the team with Chloe Kanika with 15 RBI. Four doubles, triple, home run. First pitch strike. The last game it took us to the fourth inning to have two combined hits in the game. We already have that here in the first. foul. Well, Nikki, you've seen a lot of softball over the years. Have you ever seen someone stand so far in front of the plate as Mary does? Nearly I, out of the box. Yeah, I haven't. I've been watching that all day and, you know, even with that stance, she's able to reach every part you know, and, and that's what's impressive to me. I mean, when you first see her stance as a pitcher, I, I'd be thinking to myself, I'm going to throw this girl hard in, but she makes those adjustments and has such quick hands that she's able to do whatever she needs to do from that part of the box. If you can't see on the broadcast, her back foot is even with the front of the play, and her front foot is nearly out of the box. Pops a one, back foul, and she doesn't change her stance no matter what the pitcher is, no matter what the speed is. junior year has had a lot of success with this. Hey, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Mary having a good year at the plate and also behind the plate. Handling this USD pitching staff. Giving up just seven runs in the last seven games. Ahead of that one, pulls it foul. One and two is still the count. Up high, runners going, Kaylee Hill goes out of the shortstop's glove. Would have been close, so a stolen base for Hill. And for Kaylee Hill, 
It's her first career collegiate stolen base. Gotta wonder if that was a, a hit and run and the ball was just too high. Popped up foul. Coach Mack just wanted to get her that first stolen base, I think. Still a great athlete, but not necessarily the speediest. Now she's in the scoring position. Up high again. See if Grabowski can come up with a clutch two out RBI. Kaneko on deck, full count. Up high again, swinging. And that will retire the side. I think it hit her, but she swung, so it doesn't matter. So that's it. That's the end of the first. Both teams with one hit will step aside. You're watching USC Softball on the W.TV. Welcome back to the USD Softball Complex. Thanks for joining us either on the W.TV or USDTorreros.com. I'm Ben Pearson alongside former Torreros shortstop Nikki Geis. Torreros was able to get a hit in the bottom of the first, but suffered three strikeouts, including Grabowski, who got hit on the hand but was caught swinging. So that still goes down in the books as a strikeout. Not awarded first base. Leading off in the second for the Lions. Mackenzie, Mackenzie Lakian, senior right fielder. And 233 on the year. First pitch swinging, but it went off her foot. Foul ball. Today's broadcast is brought to you by proud USD sponsors Aladdin Bail Bonds, MRC Smart Document Solutions, the Xerox Company and San Diego County Toyota dealers. Trevor's looking to win their sixth straight. After this, they'll have a double header at UC Santa Barbara before welcoming, welcoming in the Pacific Tigers to kick off WCC play. Inside, one and one. Last night, it was good to see Grace Hernandez get a couple wins. Still a losing record in five and six, but a lot of those, a lot of those games she's had losses have been low scoring. Trails can't give her some offense, or she suffers a lot of unearned runs end up putting her in the loss column. But don't want the record fully. She's having a very good junior season. Gets that one in there, two and two the count. Not as much of a strikeout pitcher as Von Sprecken, but pitches to her defense. It's a lot of ground balls. Shortstop stream. <laughs> Absolutely. It makes the game a lot of fun when you know your pitcher is going to give you a, an opportunity to play and make plays for the team. And yesterday, Mavertis had a couple nice plays ranging to her left and spinning and getting the runner out. Actually, the back-to-back -back batters. Low and outside, full count. Coach Max 
certainly hoping Grace can have another successful outing after Von Sprecken threw 10 innings in the last game. Slow roller Tatum Schultz. She handles sidearms. First batter retired. I'll bring up the designated player, Liz Caggiano. Foul off the first base side. <laughs> Owen won the count. Well, that one's in there. So the USD pitching staff on a roll right now. But before this Amazing seven game string where they allowed just seven runs. They gave up 12 to San Jose State, including eight of them that came in the first inning. Uh, swing and a miss. Second strikeout for Hernandez in that game against San Jose State. Eight first, first inning runs, although seven of them were unearned, saving Von Sprecken's ERA. Trey was able to battle back in that game to extend it to the full seven innings, ultimately falling. 12 to 6. But since then, they have not given up many runs, not given up many hits. Just two hits in 10 innings in the first game against Harvard. And no walks by Van bon Sprecken. That thing is just as impressive as the two hits. It gives your defense and your offense a lot of confidence, too, knowing that your pitchers are going to go out there and really give you a chance to win each time. That was Von Sprecken's 14th win on the season. That puts her into the top 10 for a single season at USD. Ties her with what Cassidy Coleman had last year. We still have 18 games to play. Uh, pulled foul. One and two the count. Breeze picking up a bit. Another gorgeous day in San Diego. Two's on the board, 2-2 two, two count, two outs. Top of the second. Pulled foul. Madison got, started all 14 games for the Lions. At shortstop, and just 184 on the season. The Lions as a whole have struggled offensively, hitting 216 as a team. Another one pulled foul. It's ahead of Hernandez. Count still at 2 2. Ground at the middle. Schultz has it. Fires the first in time. Tires the Lions. 1 2 3 here in the second. USD coming up in the bottom of the second. You're watching Trail Softball on the W.TV.
Senior captain Chloe Kinnick will lead off the bottom of the second for the Toreros. Third baseman tied for second on the team in RBI 15. She tied with Mary Grabowski for that for that spot. Swing and a miss on the first pitch. Two forty two average, two home runs. Go with that was fifteen RBI. Swung through that one. Columbia pitcher Tanya Wu struck out the side in the first, all swinging. She did give up the single to Kaylee Hill, though. Fouled back. Fans can stay in touch with Torero Athletics everywhere you go by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and usdtreros.com for all the nonstop information and behind the scenes look for all your favorite USD sports. 0 2 count. Wu deals low. Skips all the way to the backstop. Wu is the only pitcher USD did not see from Columbia yesterday. Can Echo pops that one up. The third baseman, easy play there. Tessa Kroll started game one, and she was roughed up a bit. She was relieved by Kayla Maloney, who really shut them down at the end of game one. And then she started game two and went the distance. So Wu getting her first look today at the Toreros Rooney. First pitch swinging. It's going to be a tough play for the shortstop, ranging back. Makes a nice stop there. Nice catch, I mean. Quickly, two down for USD. For a middle infielder, it's always a tough play when you're running away from the plate. Absolutely, especially the spin of that ball was taking her um, definitely to that right field line. It's Wu's first look at the Toreros. The Lions get their third look at Grace Hernandez. Maybe third time's a charm for Columbia. So they're trying to get one more win before they head back to the East Coast. Outside. hit high and foul and caught by the third baseman so after striking outside in the first three infield pop-ups in the second still tied at 0-0 zero, zero. we're going to the third you're watching trail softball on the w.tv
back for the top of the third. Not at 0-0. Leading off for Columbia with the second baseman, Taylor Trout. A freshman hitting just 150 on the season thus far. Lined up the middle, past the diving Tatum Schultz. Well, second hit of the game for Columbia and the second time they've had the leadoff runner on. That will bring up the leadoff hitter, Alex Cook, who doubled to start the game. See if she's looking to bunt here. Trout at first base is two for two and stolen bases. Kaneko at third and Rooney at first are up close. Squares the bunt, pulls it back, ball one. So Nikki with the third and first baseman, you know, expecting bunt. If they're gonna throw it a second, are they waiting for their teammates call or is it just kind of a gut instinct based on how hard it's hit? I think it's both, but you definitely, I mean, you judge how hard it was, it's bunted to you. So you know if it's soft, you're not going to have a chance to probably get that lead runner. So that's up to, you know, your decision making. But if you get it, if you get it hard, I think your first look has to be to that lead runner. Uh, two and oh. Squares again, goes straight down, the bounce is foul. Two one. Oh, I assume she'll be looking the bunt again. The other thing is for that with your your shortstop and your second baseman in, in motion, it's going to be hard for them to to see exactly where the runner is to be able to tell you where to throw it. So it's hit pretty hard. Grace will go to first. Grace, one of the better fielding pitchers. She gets out, but the runner does move up. Now we'll bring up Shimoda. She walked her first time up. So the second time in two innings, the Lions have a runner in scoring position. In the first inning, Columbia had runners on second and third with one out, and Grace was able to get ground out to first and then strike out Lee to get out of the jam. Shimoda up in the line's best hitter, Kerry Cook, waiting on deck. That one's in there for a called strike, 0-2. Oh Roll to the Schultz. She'll take care of it. Gets the out. Trout does move up to third, though. Well, we'll bring up Kerry Cook. She laid down a sack bunt her first time up. Now looking for a clutch two out hit. Trying to get the Lions their, their first lead against USD of the weekend. Game one yesterday, they were shut out six to zero. Game two, USD won four to two. It was tied one one at one point. Columbia never had the lead. Swing and a miss. Quickly down 0-2. Past the diving Schultz. And Columbia will take the 1 0 lead. Nice bit of hitting there from Cook. Lead off 
The leadoff runner comes around the score. Trout got on on that single. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Tanya Wu. First pitch in there for a strike. trip for Columbia coming all the way from New York they were out in Hawaii for about five days now here in San Diego and while those are some nice destinations haven't quite got the results they'd wanted you bet they want to get another W before heading across the country back to New York misses outside Columbia hitters are doing a good job of being aggressive against Grace them seeing her for the third time they definitely have a comfort level with her right now. That one's in there, and she'll go down looking. But they're able to get a run across and take the lead. The one run on two hits, no errors. And we'll head to the bottom of the third. Columbia up 1-0. You watch the W.TV. We give back as much as we receive to our teammates, our coaches, to our fans and to our sports to our teachers our schools and our communities giving back it isn't just something we do it's who we are Bottom of the third page, Von Sprecken will lead off. She was masterful in the circle in game one. Ten innings of shutout ball, giving up only two hits and no walks. She had what thought was a big hit in the bottom of the ninth, a sharply hit single to right. That pinch runner Hannah Gillen was called out for leaving early, stealing first. And there, it's a rope to left. Good piece of hitting. And Coach Mack is gonna send in a pinch runner. Frankie Perales. And Von Sprecken's just doing whatever she can today to make sure her team has a chance to win. Masterful in that first game. It's a great solid hit right there to start off this inning. Let's see what the Toreros can do. Again, Frankie Perales is limited to pinch running duty with a wrist injury. When healthy, she is Coach McElvain's leadoff hitter and starting second baseman. What a luxury for Coach Mack to be able to put Tatum Schultz in there, moving from left field. Mavridis squares to bunt, although it was called, called a strike. Up high, it looked. Squares again. Out in front, third, thought about going the second. Instead, we'll go the first for the sure out. So Mavridis does her job. A uh, tying run at second, and Sandusky at the plate. Just 
One down. A soft line drive to short on the first pitch. Sandusky quickly retired. Perales has a scamper back to second. I'll bring up Morgan Kurtz. Struck out swinging in her first appearance. Now the RBI opportunity. A swing and a miss there. Right fielder Kaylee Hill waits on deck. Out in front of it, pitcher fields, she's gonna have to fire quickly and she does to get the speedy Morgan Kurtz. And that will do it for the Toreros. Here in the bottom of the third, they get one hit, leave one on. Down 1-0, we're heading to the fourth inning. You're watching Torero Softball on the W.TV. Leading off for the Lions in the top of the fourth will be Jackie Lee, center fielder. She struck out swinging in her first at bat. Columbia up one to zero. We're in game two of the Toreros doubleheader against a pair of Ivy League schools. They knocked off Harvard one to zero in ten innings in game one. First pitch is up high. Gets her swinging on that one. Fouls that one off. getting her third start in two days against the Lions. And this is outside. I was a bit surprised that Hernandez didn't start against Harvard and save Von Sprecken for Columbia. But Coach Mack liked what Grace was able to do against the Lions yesterday. Thought she'd roll the dice again. As Lee goes down swinging for the second time. So Grace already with four strikeouts. Paige, who's more of a strikeout pitcher, only had two in her 10 innings. Bring up Lakian. She grounded out to Tatum Schultz at second. And the, the lead off the second inning. She fouls that first one off. Side, ball one, one and one. One down, nobody on base. 
Columbia holding on to a 1-0 to zero lead. Swings through that one. Up high, two and two. That one's inside, that will bring it to a full count. Liz Caggiano waiting on deck. Fouled, stays alive. The Lions got their run in the last inning after a leadoff single. After being sacrificed to second, the runner Trout was advanced to third on infield ground out and then came home to score on a single by Kerry Cook. This is outside. So Hernandez second walk. Number four, Liz Caggiano. I'll bring up Caggiano. She struck out in the second. Waking just one stolen base on the season. Hernandez first pitch gets the outside corner. All right, that's hit into the gap. Sandusky gets in front of it. Runner's trying to go to the third. The throw is there in time and gets the tag down. on target, right on line. Jennifer Teague not happy with the call. That'll be two outs nonetheless. Caggiano did not advance a second on the throw. So two outs. And a good job by Sandusky to get over in front of that ball that was kind of hit off to her left and able to keep it in front of her, but then also to fire a strong throw. Good job by Kaneko to get it down. That's up the middle. That's going to go through, and you got to wonder if the Lions didn't get thrown out there, if that would have been enough to score the runner from second. The Lions had a few base running blunders last night. That cost them at least one run as assistant coach. Cassie Coleman will call time. She's going to go out and talk to Hernandez. Cassie Coleman, we mentioned last year through a no hitter. She is USD's all time leader in strikeouts. And went straight from the circle to the dugout as an assistant coach. And she's done a good job with the staff in her first year coaching. Runners on first and second, two outs. Columbia up one to zero. Already with five hits here in the top of the fourth. One of those hit hits came from the current batter, Taylor Trout. She led off last inning 
with a single and came around the score of the Lions lone run. First pitch swinging right to Kaneko. Plenty of time, gets it over, and that will end the inning. So two hits, but both left on base. USC trying to get some runs. They're down 1-0. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching Torero Softball on the W.TV. Who's my next appointment with? It's with President Lyons. What's it about? It's about baseball. Kaylee Hill will lead things off for the Toreros here in the bottom of the fourth. Today is Kaylee Hill's 19th birthday. Freshman right fielder. First pitch swinging. Pops it up, but that will get down. Right between the catcher and first baseman. Ben Pearson alongside. Nikki, guys, Nikki, what have you seen from Lions pitcher so far, Wu, just giving up the two hits with three strikeouts. Yeah, she's definitely in control. She's um, working the ball in and out, especially against the, our left-handed batters. She's been really effective. Um, and I think, you know, they, they haven't seen her yet. So the Terrells are just going to have to make some adjustments. I think they're going to have to shorten up their swings a little bit um, and, and, and just try to stay out in front of everything she's bringing them and get on top of the ball. Uh, he'll sky that one. Nearly lost it in the sun, but are able to make the play. That was Alex Cook, the third baseman. For a while there, it looked pretty similar to the game-winning air from the first game. It was right around that territory, and the Harvard shortstop dropped it. So I'll bring up Grabowski. Number 19, Mary Grabowski. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. First pitch swinging again, another pop-up. This one to the pitcher. And you said it, Nikki. They, the Trez have really got to work on getting on top of the ball. They've been skying a lot of them. Yeah, the first game was the same same thing as well. And I think uh, what Wu's doing, she's going right after these hitters. She's not afraid to come inside. She's jamming a lot of the right-handed batters. And uh, Torero's got to make adjustments, get their hands a little higher, drive through the ball. Six of the Torero's last eight outs have been infield pop-ups. Coach Mack and the coaching staff can't be happy with that. This Torero team, although they are on a win streak right now, a five-game win streak, they're not exactly an offensive juggernaut. They well, play a lot of close, low-scoring games. They really need to take advantage other opportunities, that one's also popped up. It gets to the outfield, but taken care of by the left fielder, Mara Lynch. Now we'll end the inning for the Terreros here in the fourth. We're going to the fifth. USD down 1-0, looking for some runs. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Terreros softball on the W.TV.
Tuesday or Thursday action here at the USB Softball Complex on Friday, April the 3rd, as they take on Pacific, Pacific Tigers to start off the WCC play. First pitch, 4 p.m. Heading to the top of the fifth, today's broadcast is brought to you by proud USD sponsors, Aladdin Bail Bonds, MRC Smart Document Solutions, a Xerox company, and San Diego County Toyota dealers. Ben Pearson alongside former trailer shortstop Nikki Geis. And we're talking last half inning how USD is getting on top of the ball. They're popping a lot up. Is, is, that, is, that, is that them swinging? at balls or just not getting down on the ball a I combination it, yeah I think it's probably a combination plus the fact Wu's, I mean she's doing a really great job she is busting them inside and her ball has kind of a natural upward um, I'm kind of tilt to it so the Terrers are going to have to they're going to have to really make the, the effort to get their hands on top of the ball first pitch is Foul down third base side. Luckily for the Toreros, the Lions have left five runners on base through the first four innings. Hernandez ahead in the count 0-2. That one's in there for a called strike three, fifth strikeout of the game for Hernandez. And I'll bring up the catcher, Shimoda. She walked in her first set bath and grounded out to second. Number six, Kayla Shimoda. Misses. 1-0 count. Well, we'll catch the outside corner, even at 1-1. One one. Glad you could join us here on the W.TV. It's the first time USD softball has been streamed. I hope you guys like pitchers duels. After the game one went 0-0 into the 10th, USD won on a walk-off air to win 1-0. Now we hear the same score in game two on top of the fifth. This time Columbia is up 1-0. USD with just two hits through four innings. On the ground ball right to the short side, Mavridis handles. Tosses across in time for out number two. We'll bring up first baseman Carrie Cook. She has a lone RBI in the game, came in the, came in the third inning. After Taylor Trout led off with a single, she was advanced to third, and then Cook knocked her in with a single to right field. That one's right down the line, right to Rooney. She takes care of it. As Hernandez retires the side in order, USD coming up in the bottom of the fifth. You're watching USD Softball on the W.TV. Change doesn't just happen. It's imagined, innovated, pursued, and nurtured. Some people see things as they are and ask why. We see a better world and ask, why not? We're not only preparing for the world, we're preparing to change it. The University of San Diego. We are change makers.
Welcome back to the USD Softball Complex. And just like me and Nikki were talking about, Coach Mack, they got the team together. And in between the innings, and the message is pretty clear you got to get the ball on the ground. Caitlin Rooney leads off, takes first pitch inside. Terreros just with two hits, a pair of singles, one from Kayla Hill in the first, the other from Paige Von Sprecken, who led off the third with a single. That one's popped up to left field. Easy play for Lynch. She takes care of it. One down, that'll bring up Tatum Schultz. Schultz 0 for 1 with a pop up to the third baseman. getting late in the game, the Terreros are going to have to make adjustments now. And, you know, certainly it's not strange for you know, a softball game, especially USD, USD game, to be low scoring. But as we've talked about, it's the way they're getting outs. A lot of soft pop-ups, fly balls. That one's fouled out of play. But certainly got to give credit to Tanya Wu. Absolutely. Four and one third inning so far. Just the two hits, no walks, three strikeouts. All those three strikeouts came in the first, so that's one adjustment the Toreros have made. She entered the game with the best ERA on the line staff, 4-1-7 ERA, two and four, in six starts, eight appearances. Opponents were hitting 284 against her entering the game. That one also popped up two left. That is three three straight pop-ups to left for USD. Now Von Sprecken will come back to the plate. She has one of USD's two hits. And she was the hero in game one. Lowered her ERA to 175 on the season. Her third shutout, her 14th complete game. Slung at a ball in the dirt there. And she lowered her opponents Average against to 207. So certainly a, a great year for the freshman. And between Von Sprecken and Kaylee Hill, I would say the Toreros are a lock to win WCC Freshman of the Year. Just the question is which one Coach Malcolm will nominate. But right now, Von Sprecken, 1 1 count. Her Toreros are down 1 0. And she's just trying to. Get on base. That one's in, in the dirt. Two and one. And she ropes one in the left field. She has two of their hits now is right where she placed her first single. Von Sprecken just did a great job of keeping her hands high, just driving straight through the ball, not trying to do anything big or knock it out of the park, but just get the ball through through the infield, and she does just that once again. Four, so that will bring up Mavertis. She had a sack bunt in her only plate appearance, takes the first pitch for a strike. Von Sprecken was pitch run for her last time she got on a base. This time she will stay in the game. This Mavertis is ahead of that one. Hits it down the line, but it will land. So just a strike. She stays alive. Down in the count, 
O2. Von Sprecken on first. That one's up high. Tried to give it the chase. Olivia Sandusky waits on deck. That one just misses. Good eye by Mavridis. 2-2 two, two count. And the first baseman and catcher run into each other. Von Sprecken will go all the way to the third on the Lion Air. Question is who the air goes gets charged to, the first baseman or the catcher? Toro's got to take advantage of this right now. Right now is the time. That was a couple back-to-back -back airs in the bottom of 10th. They got USD the win in the last game. First pitch for a strike. Now they have one of their better hitters up in Sandusky. Runners on first and third. With, with two outs, Von Sprecken was running hard. That's how she got all the way to the third. Never know what's going to happen. That one's a blooper. Going to drop. Mavridis heads up running. Gets all the way to the third. The USD takes advantage of the defensive miscue, and they tie it up. Toreros continue to find a way. They'll take it. They're able to extend the inning after the catcher and the first baseman ran into each other. Von Sprecken heads up running, got all the way to the third. And she's able to score the bloop single from Sandusky. And more heads up base running. Mavridis got all the way to the third on that. So Torero's still in business here with Morgan Kurtz up. She is 0 for 2. Sandusky going. The throw was there. Ball, ball was bobbled. And then they will come home to score. Mavridis. Not credited with the stolen base, but advances on the throw. And that's three stolen bases for Sandusky on the day. So a couple of unearned runs give USD the lead. On the bottom of the fifth. And they still have a runner in scoring position. Kurt swings through that one. She's down in the count, 1-2. Kaylee Hill waiting on deck. So aggressive base running and uh, some unfortunate bounces for Columbia gets USD at second run. The throw was there at second to get the runner stealing, but the ball bobbled out of the glove. Runner was safe and then allowed Mavridis to come home to score. USD takes the lead on a couple unearned runs. They're up 2-1 to one going into the six. You're watching USD Softball on the W.TV.
So USD now on top, up 2-1 to one in the top of the sixth inning. Leading off for the Lions will be Wu, who's pitched a great game. Gave up a couple of unearned runs there in the bottom of the fifth. to no fault of her own. Should have been out of the inning, but the catcher and the first baseman ran into each other, which would have been the third out. Takes first pitch strike. Hernandez giving up five hits, one run, two walks, and has five strikeouts. Quickly ahead here, 0-2. Curls looking for their sixth win in a row. Improve their record to 21 and 14. As Hernandez gets another strikeout. That's two against Wu. Bring up Jackie Lee. She's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Number 14, Jackie. Check swing. She did go around. 0 and 1. Fouled back. Hernandez done a great job all day of getting first pitch strikes. Taking control of the count. Fouled. Fouled back. Count will stay 0 and 2. Side for ball one. Hernandez has retired her last five batters. Calming down after giving up that run in the third. Schultz fields it cleanly, gets the out. Two down. She stayed aggressive, even though, you know. They've gotten those five hits off of her. She has, like you said, she's calmed down, and she's gone right after these hitters. She's not shying away, you know, and she's getting her infield some ground balls and allowing them to make some plays for her. I'll bring up Lakey in. She's 0 for 1 with a walk. Drawing one of the two walks Hernandez has issued. And swings through that one, one and one the count. Hernandez trying to improve her record to an even six and six on the year. Get her third win of the season against the Columbia Lions. Inside. It's fouled back, stays alive. Two's on the board. 
2 2 count, two outs. USD up 2 to 1. Top of the six. No runners on for Lakian. Hits her swinging. Grabowski dropped it. We'll get the tag down. That's seven strikeouts for Hernandez. She's close to getting the complete game win here. We're going to the bottom of the six. Don't go anywhere. USD up two to one. You're watching USD softball on the W.TV. So, PJ, like, what's it going? Like? You're Irish, right? Yeah. Well, I was born in Ireland, and then I moved to California when I was two. So, I've been here ever since then. So, you feel like you can never be president? No, I can never be president, unfortunately. So, now are both your parents Irish? Uh, no. My, uh, my dad, my dad's from Ireland, but my mom's from Scotland, so we're kind of all over the place. Oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah. What's that all about? I don't know. They, they're obsessed with, like, luck of the Irish kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really believe in that stuff, but they like to do it. There's no pot of gold at the end of the No, no nothing like that. They, they just like to do it before games and practices and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go front thank you, thank you. Welcome back to USD Softball Complex. Here in the bottom of the six, USD clinging to a 2-1 lead, but the heart of the order up looking to add some insurance runs. Three, four, five spots, beginning with Kaylee Hill. Contreras leader in nearly every offensive category. First pitch swinging, pops it up to the third baseman. One pitch, one down. I'll bring up Grabowski. She is 0 for 2 with a strikeout, and she popped up to the pitcher in the fourth. There's four hits on the day for USD. They've left just three on base, but last thing we were able to take advantage of a few defensive miscues from the Lions. Scored two runs to take the lead. Torreros are 9 and 6 in one run games this season. Looked for number 10. That one skied high, also going to left field. She's been active today. Battles the sun, and she takes care of it. Two quick outs, and here comes Kaneko. now four of the last six outs that have been pop outs to left field. Torero is fortunate to be up 2-1 right now with all these pop outs. Oh, nice snag by the third baseman. And a quick 1-2-3 inning for Wu and the Lions. USD holding to a 2-1 lead. See if they can close it out. We're going to the top of the seventh. Don't go anywhere, fans. You're watching USD Softball on the W.TV. Grace Hernandez back out there looking for her sixth complete game of the season. She has the seven, eight, nine batters for the Lions. She's given up one run on five hits. 
Giving up a couple walks with seven strikeouts. And although it's seven, eight, nine for the Lions, each one of these hitters has at least one hit on the day. This leadoff batter is huge for Hernandez. First pitch outside. It's important for Hernandez to stay aggressive against these batters. Gets the call, one and one. Kaneko and Rooney playing even with the base. USD trying to go 5-0 and on this week's homestand and win their sixth straight game. And if this score holds, they would have given up just eight runs in the past eight games. A remarkable feat for the Trail pitching staff. Low and outside, three balls, one strike. back. Full count. off the first base side. Count remains full. Kajiano looking to get that leadoff runner on. We give Coach Teague some options. The pinch run, sacrifice runner over the second. Pop back again, we'll do it again. High and outside, so the Lions do get their leadoff runner. And Coach Teague is going to send in a pinch runner, it looks like. And there will be Olivia Parker. Coach Mack is going to make a pitching change, bringing in Von Sprecken for a save opportunity. And for San Diego with Von Sprecken coming in, this will be just her second career save. It's not really something Coach Mack has has been doing much this year, although she, she did this yesterday and it worked. After Grace pitched five innings, she brought Von Sprecken in for the last two. Your attention, please. Pinch right at first base for Columbia. Number one, Olivia Parker. Now pitching for San Diego. Number 20, Paige Von Sprecken. Von Sprecken, those who were with us for game one, saw her throw 10 innings of shutout ball. She only gave up two hits, didn't walk a single batter to earn her 14th win on the season. And it was also her 14th complete game, lowering her ERA in the season to 175. Here she inherits a runner on first. Madison Gott is the batter. Runner at first, a pinch runner, Olivia Parker. She has not attempted a steal on the season. Carrying her 
eighth game. Columbia doesn't have a very deep bench. Ontario defense needs to be ready for anything here. Yeah, Columbia has exactly what they want. They got their lead runner on, sacrifice. Wide throw, but Schultz takes care of it. But Columbia gets the job done, advances the tying run to second. Up the nine hitter Trout. She is one for two. She scored the Lions' only run. Von Sprecken trying to get these last two outs. First pitch is in there. And Trout for Columbia. She's kind of like Grabowski, stands really far up in the box. Wide stance. Ball in the dirt, nice save by Grabowski. With one out, you don't want to get that runner to the third base, allow for a sack fly. Uh, two and one. Drops the bunt, it goes foul. Trying to catch the Toreros off guard. Although Rooney was charging. Trout will call timeout. Lace up for spikes. 2-2 two -two count, one out. Tying run on second base. USD up 2-1 to one in the top of the seventh. Scored on a pair of unearned runs in the fifth. Inning was extended after Columbia catcher and first baseman ran into each other, let the ball drop. USD took advantage to score two more after that. Up high. Be a full count. Von Sprecken does have an open base, although the lineup will turn over to the leadoff spot. Hits fair, hits Kaneko, then goes foul. She throws it in to left, but the runner was on the ground, unable to advance. That will be an infield single. Tough break. That ball was going to bounce foul, but hit Kaneko in fair territory before it could. So now the go-ahead run is on first. The tying run is on third, and just one out for the leadoff hitter, Alex Cook. 20, Alex Cook. Alex Cook led off the game with a double. Also had a sacrifice. And was called out on strikes in the fifth. Here she has a chance to tie it up. Sharply hit the Schultz, she bobbles. She'll get the first. She will get the out, but the tying run comes. But we're all tied up at two.
1 0 count, Shimoda's up. Popped up. Mavertis has it right in front of Kurtz. And that will end the inning. Well, we are tied again, this time 2 2, heading to the bottom of the seven and see if USD has some more. Walk off magic in them. Don't go anywhere. The number one team in the country is the king of the West Coast Conference. It's been a, a fun start to our season, and, and I'm happy with where we're at right now. The W.TV, the energy of the West Coast Conference on your browser, smartphone, and tablet. All the action, anytime, anywhere. Leading off to the bottom of the seventh will be first baseman Caitlin Rooney. Leading off for San Diego, number six, Caitlin. USD Rooney. trying to get another walk off and avoid going to another extra inning game. Thanks for joining us here on the W.TV or USDTreros.com. I'm Ben Pearson, joined by former Toro Nikki Geis. We've had a pair of low scoring. Pitchers duels today. USD got a 1-0 win in 10 innings in game one against Harvard. Now we're locked in a 2-2 tie. Columbia rally back to tie in the top half of the inning. Rooney right up the middle, leadoff hit. And just what the doctor ordered. Nice solid hit for Rooney. Exactly what the Toreros needed. Game has had some miscues, some errors, some interesting plays, but USD is is ready for another walk off. Hannah Gillen will come in the pinch run for Rooney. Gilland at first, Tatum Schultz up. She's an excellent bunter. That one, she gets under it, fouls it straight back. Who's done such a good job of getting the Toros to pop up today? It's important, really important, that we get this button down right here. Another one popped up. Now she's 0-2. Coach Mack has this tough decision to make. No outs. Some speed at first with Gilliland. And Von Sprecken is up next. She's two for two. A couple hard hit singles. Swinging away, fouls it off over the Torero dugout. On the left field, right fielder charging in, makes the play. Gill and scampers back to first. Bring up Von Sprecken. So I mentioned two for two. The run scored. Can Von Sprecken do it again? She's been doing it all day for the Toreros. They need her here. Gillen's going. Did not leave early this time. 
Although she's gunned down, nice throw from Shimoda. Got to give credit where credit's due. That was a nice throw, nice tag. Gillen didn't get the best jump. It's a perfect throw. Late called strike. Von Sprecken down 0 2. Up high. Tried to get her to chase. One and two. Rolls that one in there. Evens count it. Two, two. Spreckens battled back, worked the count full, takes that one low. She's been on base both times in her previous at bats. Got under that one, but it's hooking foul. Me down 0 2. She works a walk. Bring up Mavertis. Regardless of the outcome, Grace Hernandez will not get the win today. So, once again, she an unlucky no decision for her. Von Sprecken technically charged with the blown save. Uh, she's been pretty good at the plate. Two for two, a couple of singles and a walk. Up high. Fooled her there, gets her looking, and we are going to extra innings for the second game in a row. Sit so tight, folks. We're going to extra innings. You're watching USD Softball on the W.TV.
So we're going the extra innings one more time. Top of the eighth here, we're all knotted at 2-2. This is the first time we've ever streamed softball here at USD. And of course, both the games are gonna go into extra innings. The first one went 10. USD won one to zero on a walk-off air. A sky-high pop-up to the shortstop, which was bobbled, allowing the winning run to come in from third. Up the hill, she goes back, then comes in, bobbles it. Now it's the Toreros committing an air. Both of USD's runs came in the fifth. Both were unearned. They're a tough play for Kaylee Hill. It's an outfielder. The ball hit right at you. Your instinct is to take your first step back. And then she came forward and kind of stuck between catching it, their glove open like a basket or snagging it. And the ball just kind of popped right out. Let's see if the Lions can take advantage. This pitcher, Woo, that's up. She's 0 for 3. She had a great game in the circle. Five hits, no earned runs, one walk, five strikeouts. Turns the bunt, fouls it back. No international tiebreaker in this one, at least not for a while. Did not turn to bunt that time. And just missed outside. So the fifth extra inning game in the season for USD. They're two and two in those games. That one's also up high. After pitching 10 innings in the first game, Von Sprecken's back in the circle, trying to get her 15th win on the season. This is up high again. Carrie Cook the run at first, has no stolen bases on the air, just one attempt. Popped up foul territory. Grabowski, Kaneko going for it. Kaneko will be the one that gets the put out. One down. Cook has to stay put. It's a big out for the Toreros after the lead runner getting on first base. We'll bring up center fielder Jackie Lee. She's 0 for 3 with a couple strikeouts. left. Kurtz ranging to her left. Makes a nice play. Cook has to get back. Two down. Here go Lakey in. She's 0 for 2. First pitch strike. To Schultz, she handles it and gets the third out. We're going to the bottom of the eight, still not at it too. Make it a great 
day. Top of the order for the trails, Olivia Sandusky will lead things off. She's one for three with an RBI. The lone RBI for USD. After her will be Kurtz. And then the trails power hitter, Kaylee Hill. Takes first pitch strike. that one off. You know, Nikki, we were talking earlier how softball players are used to double headers, but not necessarily back-to-back -back right. extra inning games, <laughs> especially <laughs> one with 10 innings. Exactly. Well, they figured, I mean, if you're going to have your game live streamed, then, you know, <laughs> why not make it worth the fans to watch it, right? All right, Sandusky with the leadoff single. She already has three stolen bases on the day, two in the first game, one in the second. So you don't necessarily have to bunt, although Morgan Kurtz is very speedy and a good bunter. And Kaylee Hill up next. Now the Toreros know when the cameras are rolling. She tries to bunt, fouls it back. Morgan has a great chance to help her team out. She struggled a little bit today, but this is what she does really well, especially with her speed. She can cause a lot of problems if he, she just gets on top of this ball and gets this bunt down. Now a foul back. Now two strikes. Sandusky is a threat to steal. Last time USD attempted a steal, Hannah Gilliland, the pinch runner, was thrown out. Shimoda sh showed she had a strong arm. And the swinging bunt there also goes foul. Oh, she lines it to the pitcher. Sandusky was moving on contact, and she has doubled up at first. Nice heads-up play by Wu, She's building her position. That was a, actually a tough, tough play to make, and then she was also able to double her off at first base. She's having a great game. You can't fault Sandusky. Supposed to be going on contact. It's a tough break. Nice play by Wu. Now Hill is up. She is one for three. But up high. for a strike. Both teams with two runs, six hits, and one air. Here in the bottom of the eighth. Up the middle. Diving stop by the shortstop. Keeps it in front of her, but unable to make the play. Infield hit for Kaylee Hill. Great stop by the shortstop. She wasn't able to make the play, but you just see her going all out, doing what she can to help her team. That's Madison got at short. Brings 
brings up Mary Grabowski. First pitch misses away. Down low. Hitters count 2 and 0. Oh. And with the 2 0 -oh count, that's the signal for Coach McElvain to pinch run for Hill. It'll be Kylie McNutt. McNutt, you have a player that can stay in right field for Hill until Hill comes up again if she does. Swinging, taps it foul. Just foul down the left field line. So it's two straight she's been ahead of. Two, two count, two outs. Control that one hit Grabowski in the back. So now just a single away. McNutt, the pitch runner at second. She has speed. And Chloe Kaneko, one of your better hitters at the plate. 0 for 3 so far. For three will seem like nothing if she can just get this base hit and score this run for the Toreros. She is a senior captain. Had a great career here. Turns on it down the left field line. Makes the catch. Bobbles it. Falls out of her glove. They come in to score. How about that? For the second time today, USD wins on a walk-off air. She ranged far to her right. Got in position, got a glove on it, and it just came out. McNutt comes around to score, and USD does it again on a walk-off air. This time in the eighth inning, they win 3-2. to two. Wow. <laughs> wow is right. <laughs> what a combination of games today, winning in extras on airs. That's the third time this year USD's won on a walk-off air. But twice in one day. And the first time we're streaming softball here, both go to extra innings, and both times the ball bounces the Toreros' way. They go 5-0 and on the homestand. They won six in a row. They improve to 21-14 and on the year. Paige Von Spreck, and she gets her 15th win of the season as USD somehow once again escapes with a win. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us here at the USD Softball Complex. It's been a wild pair of games we've seen against these Ivy League schools. Thanks for tuning in. For all, the whole crew that was able to put this together, Josh Lawrence, Ezra Broder from the WCC, Tim Day running the TriCaster. For Nikki Geis, I'm Ben Pearson. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.